learn something. Children who do not know their roots, who are not connected from whence they come, can never attain where they must go. I had a mom and dad who told me stories all the time about my childhood, about their childhood, about their growing up. And I love listening to my parents when they speak because my mom had a penchant for accuracy and detail. And my dad had this wonderful penchant for exaggeration and hyperbole. <laughs> I was afraid as a boy of North Carolina because the stories always had these terrible weather patterns in them. And, and I tell you, my father, I, the, the Bible says clearly, thou shalt respect the honor of thy mother and father. But when my dad talked about the day that in the mountains of North Carolina, the tsunami hit his town, I'm like, Dad, a tsunami could not have hit a town. <laughs> and he said, boy, it happened. It was before the internet. You can't look it up, but it happened. <laughs> but the truth is, my father would tell my brother and I that we were the result. We were the living manifestations of a conspiracy of love. Conspiracy of love? My father who said he was born too poor to be poor, he couldn't afford to be poor, he was Pope, P.O., couldn't afford to be poor. <laughs> was born to a single mom who could not take care of him. Please understand, in the African American community, the percentage of children being born to single mothers is amazingly high. In cities like Canada and Newark, over 70% of the children are being born to single mothers. Now there's no crime in that. The question is, is, what will happen to that child? My father's town, there was a conspiracy of love. Would not let him fail. His mama couldn't take care of him. They made sure there was food on the table, a roof over his head. He had no tradition of college in his family, but he was told from his earliest days, you will go to college. And when he couldn't afford it, it was the church. My father was saying, passed around a collection plate. Passed around a collection plate to help him afford his first semester's tuition at North Carolina Central University. And when my mom and dad landed in college, you all know what was going on there. In the 1960s, my, my mom, I, I thought I was important. I went to the, Pastor, I went to, the, to, the, to be the commencement speaker at Fisk University for my mom's 50th reunion year. And I thought I was important. I'm walking around, commencement speaker, people treat me like I'm somebody, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Kier, uh, Mr. Commencement, Mr. Honorary Degree, and I'm sort of getting kind of big. And, I don't know what power women have <laughs> to take even their adult children and put them in their place real quick. <laughs> but I sit there at this banquet table and, and my mom comes up to me and says, come here, boy. <laughs> and I look at her, I'm the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. I'm an honorary doctor. I'm, I'm looking at her, she goes, boy, get up, come, come here. And she starts pulling me out of my seat and I'm pulling back and say, mom, I'm the mayor. <laughs> and she says to me, she says, son, you need to come to these tables. Meet this person who led the boycott against the local store that wasn't serving black people. Meet this person that was registering folks to vote when it was dangerous to do so. You all know people die good when change one. It was almost like she was walking on the table saying, pay attention, boy. These people fought for you. These people struggled for you. These people bled for you. When my parents wanted to get a job, you all know this. It wasn't that long ago. The blacks could not get jobs in certain corporations. And it was activists, black and white, through organizations like the Urban League that got them their jobs. When we moved to New Jersey, in Bergen County, they wouldn't show my family homes in white neighborhoods. And so they got another organization, Fair Housing Council, blacks and whites working together Set test couples behind my parents. The house they loved, they were told it was sold. The white couple shows up, still for sale. They put a bid on the house, proxy for my parents. And the day of the closing, my father shows up with a volunteer lawyer, exposing the, the operation, real estate agent, so upset he gets up and punches my dad's lawyer and sticks a dog on my father. Now, the size of that dog changed over the years. <laughs>
I will walk into that institution called the United States Senate and do everything I can to try to pay back all those people who I can't pay it back. I've got to find ways to pay it forward. But I, I want to deliver a second message, and this is what Mayor Kelly was here. Where, where, where's uh, Freeholder? Where's Joe? Your Freeholder. Where, he, there he is over there. Man's got a great haircut. <laughs> One of the great leaders I've met in the state of New Jersey, along with your man. And so, you know, this privilege that Pastor Morgan has given me, I just want to just deliver the second message and, and, and be very quick about it. We have come so far, but we are still in peril. Still in peril. The poverty rates in our country are shocking, giving a nation of this wealth. We have crime and violence that's consuming a generation, especially of young men. We have inequalities that are racking our nation still, especially in the criminal justice system, where New Jersey has 14% African Americans, but a prison system that's over 60% black. And you have to understand, we can't wait and hope that someone changes these problems and addresses these issues. We have to do it. And, and, and as, as Frederick Douglass paraphrased him, he said, I prayed for years for my freedom, but I was still a slave. It wasn't until I prayed with my hands and I prayed with my feet that I found my freedom. And so I know what I have to do. This idea that the United States said, when Reagan did it, when Bush did it, Clinton Carter, 50 years where they extend unemployment insurance when the economy is this bad, and suddenly, Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Come on now. A bunch of Republicans are saying that they don't want to extend it. Yeah. Tens of thousands of New Jersey, it's 40% of the children in the household. That's unacceptable to me. I'll fight these battles in the Senate. It is ridiculous yeah. Yeah. that everything is going up. Everything is going up. Gas is going up. Rent's going up. Everything's going up but the minimum wage. We need to raise the federal minimum wage now. Over ten dollars, I will fight these battles in the Senate, but we must fight them together. We know that politics is a game where pressure counts, and never forget that the power of the people is always greater than the people in power. So I ask for your engagement on these issues, and then I ask for your engagement as a community. And that's where I'm going to end, because I'm going to end on this note. It's tax season. I just want to let you all know something. We have far more wealth than we manifest in this world. Wow. Because of things we do to undermine our own well-being. I could not stand in church. My mama wouldn't forgive me if I didn't tell the truth. That as much as we need to push and fight and demand that we have a Congress and a state government, that do the things they should do, like restore the earned income tax credit to what it used to be in here in New Jersey. We need to fight and push for those things, but we need to take responsibility. I'm just going to give you two examples. Most of us have financial practices ourselves or our friends that we know hurt us. We use check cashing places where they take large percentages of our money. We pay our bills with money orders, which means we're giving away our money unnecessarily. We found out when I was mayor of Newark that we were leaving in one city in New Jersey millions of dollars on the table in uncollected earned income tax credit money. Uncollected tax credit money for the child care tax credit. That people were going down the street to get their taxes done and then they wanted that instant refund which meant they were giving away more money there too. So we got a lot of folk together. This is what I want to push on. I've so already spoken in churches about this. We got a lot of folks together when I was mayor. I want to do all over the state now. And said, enough is enough. We need to change our own financial practices. And we need to understand that doing that's power. I'll give you an example. The South Water New York Black family came into our financial empowerment center. We said, wait a minute. You could go three years back and collect un er er earned income tax credit money. You qualify for a child care tax credit. You qualify for a first time home buyer's tax credit. We took a family in debt and turned them into a family with money 
And instead of just taking that big check, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars from the government, and going out and buying a flat screen TV. Come on. Come on. My grandmother, during the Depression, did not sustain a family based on consumerism, narcissism, and me.